I want to start, how did they say at the very beginning? That's the sound of music, okay. My brother, my sister, yes, many, 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 many moons ago, after studying at Bible school, maybe today is more a thing of history and where are we going to, um, finished my four-year Bible school theology, and God said that we must take, go to the nations and go with the arts, go with the prophetic, go with the message and have an impact. And you know, I brought you to the leadership. I said, 12 months of touring. And they said, no. Okay, I must go and pray again. I'm going to pray again. Um, come back. Uh, three months of training and three terms of touring and ministry. No. Go back. Six months of touring, six months of training. No. Three terms or ten months of training and one or two months of touring. No. Just 12 months of training. Guys, how did I start with MDK? Music Drama Kunst. It was not my vision. It's not what I see. I must do something that's totally the opposite of what I thought of doing. Instead of reaching out and going to the nations with the arts and the impact and this and this and this, just training. Many times, guys, leadership see the foundations and we see the house and everything in it. We see the exciting part and many times leadership sees the boring part in certain facets when we walk a road with leaders. And that's how I started that's how we started with MDA car. The good word is shut up, submit. <laughs> yeah. That was the beginning. And um, so all I'm saying is trust God that you have somebody that's speaking to your life in such a way that they can even tune you and you will not quit the relationship. But you need somebody like that. I needed that leadership in my life. So I started it, and I started to give class from 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock the evening, Saturdays, and what, 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 what. Me, me and alone, I left medical school to do this, to give all these classes. I thought to myself, what are you doing with your life? What are you doing with your life? I'm going to crack up if I hear that song again of more than 90 students that knew it's all the same song that they don't get right, they didn't practice at home. What are you doing? And then three months down the line, the leader said, no, you must start cell groups. I said, my response was, you are killing me. I'm already too busy. I'm already too busy. But God has called me with that man, with that leadership. So I'm not su submitting to him because he's a God. Not at all. No, I will walk with him the road. I will take the input because God said I'm walking with that man. And they said that. And, and you know, at the end of that year, at the time when we had the, like this, uh, not ceremony, whatever you call it, with all the first years, all the, all the guys that did classes, I said, if it wasn't for the cells that we started, the, the, the MDA car would have closed down, because so many people started to open up about things in their lives with certain subjects, and that through the cells we could walk a road with them. And because of that, two years later, they was the first full-time students they said, oh, we want to come full-time. And when they said, we want to come full-time, uh, I said, God, what now? And God said, now start the full-time. <laughs> and, um, you know, then we wanted to start the dance. M dear, dear car. M dear, dear car. Means music, drama, dance, and art. Kids. So, Get a whole presentation, pray about it, get scriptures, whatever, take it to the leader um, of that time. Um, he was my spiritual dad, do him for Malter, and put it before him. And he was looking at it, at it. I fat a pin, I just mocked it, dances from the devil. I sat there, I thought, you know, I can get out here. I have 20 scriptures with me. I will have everybody taking my side, telling me I'm right and he's wrong. You know, I can do that, but that's not the wisdom of God. That's not the guidance of God. Because we must work it out because God said, I'm walking with this man. I was sitting there, I was praying. Now we had, I had an appointment with my leader there. 
And then one month later, Nikki and a lot of uh, ladies are going to set up some syllabi in Harry Smith. Because do I not have a problem? Because dance is in the word. Praise the Lord with dancing. There's a lot of things. Maryam, all those guys. <sighs> but that meeting was postponed. So the meeting with Duom is at the same time when they already started to set up syllabi. Now what must I do? Nikki, stop. No dance. No, I'm sitting there and praying in tongues. In that meeting, I said, God, what must I do? But Nikki was already expressing in worship, sometimes with a flag or a cloth, some worship. And I said, Duom, if... If Nikki, that's worshiping God in that way in the church, if she takes what she has before the Lord and disciple others to do the same thing in worshiping God so creatively in their expression, is that okay that we do that? He said, while I was praying in tongues. Yes. Yes, they can do that. That's exactly what she's doing. But we can hear one another not correct. We can have such a lot of misunderstandings. We can have such a lot of ways of uh, seeing and hearing one another. Even just take a sentence of, of our conversation and take it totally out of context. Totally out of context. And the enemy is a master, master deceiver to, take, to do that in our lives. That you take one sentence of what that person said and it's ridiculous. It's a schrecklich and it, it's not right. But you take it out of context. Even with Jesus. Eat my body, drink my blood. Come on. He said that. But take it out of context. It is, it is horrific to think about it. But you need to put Jesus' words in context. Are you still here? Anybody? So with your life, so with my life, let it be so in Jesus' name. That God will help us. That's how we started to dance. But with so many things in my life, so many things where I saw a lot of breakthroughs, it started with adjustments, more than 90% of it, with adjustments that leadership brought. We say the prophetic is to confirm what you've heard from God. You know, yes, but the prophetic many times is... To bring correction in what you've heard from God. And sometimes to stop you in what you think you heard from God. That was in my life. That was the way in my life. The things that I saw, the things that I felt, the things that was prophesied over my life. When I said I want to start with this, this ministry thing into the nations with the arts. You know, ten years later, all of that started to happen. But leadership saw the foundations. Because leadership is a protection over your life, the people that you walk with. The protection over your life makes sure that you lay foundations so that the house will not fall in on you, that you will not build on sand. Leadership always correct? Not at all. But you need to hear what God is saying to you and work it out in a relationship. Work it out in a relationship and not stand just on a right and a wrong. Sorry, aircon is not there. Praise the Lord, even when there's load shedding. And just the generator. Hallelujah. Where are we now? Why did I say that? Okay. I'm saying to you, my brother, my sister, you need to hear God. With whom are you walking? And then you walk with that person and you figure it out. What God is saying. What God is saying. Are you with me? Once I had like an argument with, with Duham, that was my spiritual dad. And uh, at one stage, he even want, he said, go. He chased me out of his office. I just said, Dom, I'm not leaving. Because we need to sort it out. I'm with you. We are with one another. And even if we agree, distant, does not agree today, we need to sort this out. Then, like in Trana, like praying for one another and bless one another. And it was excellent. But we walked the road. So we had M D to a car. And then at one stage, God said, multimedia. Now then I realized, M, D, T, W, K, M, M. You cannot just call a school something like that. It's not going to work. But we started weekends, and we called the weekends K, 
creare. That's the Latin word for create, where I believe that was the command from God. And in the vision of the school, in the vision of the ministry, is, is the command of God. So when we say creare, we say the word of God's command, create. Create, but create with him. That was the thing of creare. So then M D Twier car. I'm sorry, didn't become Creari. Just before that, God said everything English. So then it became M, dear, dear, A, art. Music, drama, dance, art, and multimedia, it became English. But with all of that, we then decided Creari. We make it Creari. And everybody was freaking out. What on earth is that? How must we say it? Even today, sometimes people would say, Creer, or what? what? What are you talking about? But that was the mandate God had for us. When God said, make, take all the syllabi, I can't remember, more than 50 of them, English, everything to English, because God's going to send the nations. Oh, where? No, there's nobody, nobody that you know of. We must just start to do that. Not yet finished. Now, you know, before I started with, with Creare, MDK, I went on an outreach through Holland to Romania. Romania is the only country in my heart at that stage. Even today, I believe we will start a school, we will start a, a church there in a specific city in Romania for the, ministering into the region. And those days, 35 years ago, it was like a base for Romania, Ukraine, Russia, in that whole region. We're going there in the second part of this year, in Jesus' name. God's going to help us. God's going to help us. But Romania is in my heart. Okay, here's a guy, Henry Miller. They, him and his family in Germany, they went on an outreach to Romania. I don't know that. Here, this man phoning me from Germany. I feel in my heart, God says... I must sponsor two people from Romania to come and study there in Bluefontein, MDKR. It's just after we nearly finished with changing all the syllabi into English. God just, <laughs> and he picked that one country that's in my heart out of, I don't know, three, four countries in the world, and he, that there will be a sponsorship for them. Then it opened up internationally. I don't know how it happened, how people from more than 33 countries came and studied here for a year or two. I don't know how it happened. We didn't advertise it all over the world. God just did it. My brother, my sister, I challenge you to walk with God and not to stand like I can stand today and say, I heard God accurately in all of this. No. With so many, so many things. I heard, but then adjustment. Heard, adjustment. I heard, adjust. Heard, totally adjustment like that. Whew. Are you with me? Stay open, but bring and keep it before the Lord. But don't you discu dis get discouraged if you thought you were, had to hear it perfectly from God, and now it's not perfect. Don't find your security in something that must be perfect where everything must be correct. No, not like that in Jesus' name. Are you with me? Are you with me? So, we had Creare. And in the, this Creare, then at one stage, okay, people asked, we want the Bible school training, we want, we want to be raised up for full-time ministry. So we brought in the word syllabi, we brought the church planting and missions, uh, syllabi, we brought the worship because that was a main focus also, a main focus in the ministry that was prophesied from the beginning, that the worship must be the focus. In the arts is the, the way to take center stage. On the wall of the teenagers, certain teenagers, there was, and they don't do it anymore, I think, today, the posters of the musician, that band, or that actor, or that, you know, those guys. They were like these role models. But the role model is Christ. How must he take center stage? You're just a co-worker, co-actor, co-musician. So a lot of things happened. But then I realized we must do go with the prophetic. We must start a prophetic academy. Because many times... Even guys from America, they would come and they prophesy over the pastors, how the churches and everything. And the guy, he would look at me and said, 
and talk about the arts, talk about the worship, talk about this, and then he would push into prophetic will be the spear point. Prophetic will be the spear point. And more and more it came to, was put out there that us is not the main focus of the ministry, but the prophetic will be the main focus of the ministry. Christ is the foundation, but the prophetic. And today I really believe that what we have and how, what we carry, we need to get it out there that the people will know how to hear God. Even with day words, push yourself. Push yourself if you haven't done the course, extra oil. Go and do that course. Make sure that you come into, get into the place of hearing God accurately more and more and more and more. And there's a passion when we go into the nation's worship and the prophetic that they will have a passionate relationship with Christ, focus on Him, and that they will hear His voice and do what He says. That's the essence of what I believe God has called us to do. Are you with me? Now I want to start a prophetic school. I speak to Duam. I said, I want to start a prophetic school uh, like traditionally. He said, what? No. No. I said, uh, Duam, uh, how do you mean? He said, I've met somebody in my life that can articulate what I feel in my spirit. Now, and then he started to talk about Dr. Jonathan David. And he will first come with me to the School of the Prophets there in Malaysia, and then we can talk about starting a prophetic academy. Went to Malaysia just because I must, shut up, submit. There we go, sitting there, and then God said, That's your spiritual father. I said, Here's my spiritual father. God, uh, and, and Dr. Jonathan, a prophet side over Duam, get your sons together, lay hands on them, they will become each one a mighty nation. And in the, yeah, come back after two weeks. Here we are. Based on the prophecy, he organized the, the conference, laid hands on 12 for us, and after the prophecy was fulfilled, one week later, Duam died. Okay, but we started then with the prophetic, with the prophetic. And, um, but it was once again, what I see is not what must happen. How I feel is not what must happen. What I believe at that moment is not what must happen. How open are you, are you or are you just discouraged because I take it personally, because it, uh, it is giving me the value of how I perfectly hear God or how I see it. And every time it's like, I fail. I didn't hear God accurately. Okay, if it must be evaluated on right and wrong, 80% I failed of how I heard God. But then when I was at least open for correction, something happened and God just gave breakthrough. So it was God. It was depending on me. I would have done 50 other type of ways of trying to do something. But what God did was, it was him. Are you with me? Walk with those guys. Walk, walk with that man that is like a father to you. That with leadership, with people that will tune you even though you get angry, even though you feel like, Ugh. but you're still going to do it. You're still going to do it. Are you with me? So, next phase. Now, the same man, man that I said uh, 50 times here that uh, teased me about a wife and then said to me, one day, uh, when he managed in Bloemfontein, he said, I always tease you, but now go and find your wife. This is your time. You know, where you find a leader and said, tell you, shut up, submit, get your wife, you know. I said it was easy. It's easy to say, but afterwards I went with two leaders. We did communion. Just received that word in the spirit. And two weeks later, I met Jeline and... Uh, Thought she was married, bind the devil, the whole, the whole conference, end of the conference, said she was not married. And then I emailed Dr. Jonathan, I said, I've met my wife. After he prophesied that, after he commanded me to find a wife, I'm 39 years old. Three weeks later, I emailed him, I found my wife. He emailed back, get married immediately, don't even tell your mother. Can you believe it? Now, I think he wasn't serious there. But in any case, so... That happened. Then, a few years later, he called us in, me and my wife. He said to us, they're going to put you down. They're going to tell you, you must decide. Are you going to flow with Hatfield? Are you going to flow with us as Isaac Network? What are you going to choose? 
I said, there's nothing to choose. God said, you're my spiritual dad, even before my spiritual dad died, just a few months before he died. There's not a choice. It's just a thing of, am I going to be obedient or not? Not choosing him because he's so perfect, because he's the best among a lot of spiritual fathers. Not at all, man. Not at all. But you go and do what God is saying to you. And then you walk with somebody, you walk in the church, you walk in the ministry. Not because they are the best, but because God said it. Pharaoh, Joseph, Joseph, he walks in the palace, works with the palace. Daniel worked with the palace because they are the best, most holy. Not at all. They clump horrorlose knolle. Hello? But you better do what God is saying. Are you with me still? Hello, hello. And they said, no. They're going to tell you to choose. They're going to tell you to choose. Are you with us or are you going to go with them? I argued with him. Meanwhile, the prophecy became true the previous night. Came home. There's the letter. Um, you must either go now. Or we must all, only flow with Hatfield. Otherwise, you need to leave. You need to go. While I was speaking and arguing with Dr. Jonathan, he laughed at me and he just showed me three. He said, three months. I said, they will not do it. We, we don't have to plant our own church. Yeah, you will plant your, own, plant your own church. I said, no, but it, and he laughs. He said, three months. That was June. So we had this 10 hours elders meeting. And in the 10 hour our elders meeting, um, the pastor, the two pastors said, Next week, the, the church will choose who's with you, who's with us. And the week after that, you're on your own church. Six days, then we must have a vision. Then we must have everything. And we must say where we're going and how the church will be. Wonderful. God take you step by step. Amen? Ay, ay, ay. But the Creati guys, they were on tour. I said, must the Creati guys on tour just here? Yeah, they are kicked out of the church. Can we, they not just first come back and let's discuss and let's, no. And all the elders agreeing with me that they must first come back. But it was like at one stage, very um, heated discussion. And all the elders were speaking at once, not praying in tongues, but speaking at once, uh, uh, speaking, you know, and the leader just said over all of them, in two weeks, we are two. And he was like, angrily. In two weeks, we will be two. And at one stage, I just felt, what, what is my day with for in two weeks' time? Sunday in two weeks' time. Let me see what I wrote nine months before. Open it for that Sunday that we will be a new church then. C2. That's what I wrote nine months ago for that Sunday when this past is now screaming in two weeks we are two and we all and me saying no it cannot happen like that and God says you are wrong and all the elders are wrong that leader is right in two weeks you must be two congregations whoops just there had to keep quiet had to stop and as I was thinking further in that meeting Dr. Jonathan said three months. He spoke to us on the 3rd of June. We are planting the church on the 2nd of September. In two weeks' time. Three months. But I had this whole presentation to all the elders that I handed out at me. I checked it with, with Cliff and Peter and Vipia and a few leaders. And that we will come across in the right way and what we heard from God and what I feel and how the word says, one from Paul, one from Apollos. Uh, uh, Paul doesn't say, everybody from Apollos, there you go. He says, no, recognize the work of God and carry on. And there, my brother, I was 100% wrong in what God's will was. Once again, 90% of what was established through this ministry, and you could say, but, and you are the leader of the ministry, was where I was 90% inaccurate. But praise God that I could work, walk with people and with leaders together. Are you with me? You need leadership over you. You need leaders and brothers with you. Because you alone will not be 
accurate in yourself just. God died for a body, for a people, not for a person. He died for a people. Are you here? So, we have six months. We have six months to get all the students and all the leaders out there, out of uh, the buildings there, six months. And uh, as you all know, God said immediately where we must go, that Baptist church, but the Baptist church was not for sale, so we could not buy the church. And once again, like I said, 25 times, how many times I went to this this plot, seven hectares plot, and I wanted to push to buy it because I have word, I believe God says we must do it. I take different people there. We must get that. I laugh at this place, this this ground, but I, I push for that. My brother, my sister, you can push for your seven hectares and you can buy it and you can suffer the rest of your life with your seven hectare plot that I wanted to buy and I had confirmation. I drove out 17 kilometers more than 25 times. Because then this is what I feel in my spirit. I'm just a little bit inaccurate. You are in the right way. You could be in the right way. But you can lose everything if you hastily just take what you feel. This is it. And I buy the seven hectares. No. And just before we had to close down, you remember, we got that, that building. But once again. Just at the end of the six months, two weeks before the time, that pastor said, you want the church? Yeah. And then we didn't have to close down Creare. We could have Creare and have a church because we could buy that church for one million less than what they wanted to put it in the market. Monday, they want to put it in the market. So we are at Friday. The Friday before the Monday, they're going to put it in the market. This is your final chance if you want to buy the church, and we will sell it to you for like a million, nine hundred thousand less than what we're going to put it in the market for. Hello. But I went in there, and we had discussions, and I went out there, and I said, no, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. I spoke to the leaders. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. What's your day with? What did God say to you like end of December for this day, this Friday, today? My word was like 50-50. The other guy, walk, step out in faith. Other word, like, don't be intimidated. And the other word, sign on the dotted line. You need the counsel of people around you. I needed the counsel of leaders. No, you are their leader. I do need their counsel. And based on their counsel, I signed for the church. That by miracle upon miracle upon miracle, just like this, whoosh, it was paid off. With a congregation of a few people, and how God did it, I don't know, but He did it. Once again, that church where I wanted to say no, and submitting to the counsel of the leaders, decided yes, and then it happened. Still afterwards pushing, still feeling that, that, that hectares. And then, as you know, the story, sitting at the city council, telling him, oh, for interesting sake, find out whose ground is this. And based on correction upon correction upon correction upon correction, at the end of the day, got the guy on the telephone who said, God said, give the ground for free. 215 hectares for 7,000 rain. All of that how? Correction upon correction upon correction. Once again, I'm wrong. Once again, I'm wrong. Once again, I'm not just accurate. Who are you? Who am I? My brother, my sister, you have destiny. You have destiny, you have prophetic words over your life, you have a future. Make sure you are open for correction. For, from prophetic input, from with people, leaders walking with you, with people that's surrounding you, with a council of people around you. That's how you will walk into destiny. That's how you will have success. That's how you will see breakthroughs and how God will bring miracles. <sighs> are you still here? Achasa, please, man. So that's how we got that. That's how we got. Okay. Now, where am I now? God gave us the ministry with Creari and our father's home. When we planted the church, I said, God, the name of the church, what is it? And God said, I must be welcome. Because Jesus is building his church and you will be a co-worker and the 
people must be co-workers with Christ in building the church. But Jesus will present the church as to the Father as a home for the Father. Father must be welcome in whatever you built. In however you built kingdom with Christ. Hello. Father will give the church to Jesus as his bride. So the church, church that means ecclesia, the called out ones, called out from darkness, called out from rubbish, called out from the flesh. The called out ones, that means you're called out for a purpose. And this group of people that were created for a purpose, a royal priesthood to declare the praises of him who called them out of darkness into his marvelous light. That group for a purpose, and that is to become the home of the Father through Jesus. To become the bride of Christ through the Father. As you are now temples of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit in you because of the mandate that Father has. Because of the mandate what Father has. Amen. And so God pushed us into this whole thing of creative ministry. But in this season, in this time... I believe God spoke to us, especially when people from Madagascar and people out there, they wanted the Bible school curriculum. Bible school curriculum. We realized we need to have a Bible school curriculum and there's the arts. And that God is leading us to make it two separate entities. Even though people will be raised up through both. And the words that came to me for Bible school is, we have our father's home. The church, we have our father's academy, the Christian school, we have our father's champions, the sport club, but that it will be our father's excellence. Father's excellence. If there's something that you need from the word, is excellence. Excellence, more than knowing the word, because you can know the word and you can be the best Pharisee that think he's doing God a favor by killing Christ. No, no, no. The word very dangerous. But don't say, no, I don't want all these theologies. That's, that's, you're talking nonsense. Theology is an excellent word. Theology is the word theos, that means God. Logos, that means the word of God. So when you talk about theology, you're talking about God's word. So don't say, I don't want God's word. Just because you mean, I don't want the opinion of men about everything. But we need to learn from one another. Don't think, don't say it's just me and the word of God and not the theology and the dogma of this guy and that guy. Nonsense. You are also just a person, just like that guy. We need to learn from one another, but you need to distinguish in your spirit from the Holy Spirit who you need to learn from and who you need to walk with. You are still here, but we need one another. Father's excellence. You can know the word. You can know every verse in the whole Bible. You have no excellence because Satan knows the word. And there's no excellence. Excellence has to do with relationship. All the gifts, the power gifts, the healings, and the devils being chased out and the walking on water, all the gifts and all the ministry and all the things, 1 Corinthians 12. And then at the end, desire the gifts. Push yourself with all the gifts, but, 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 I will show you a more excellent way. And then he talks about the love, 1 Corinthians 13. What is it saying? What are we talking about? If you do the word without, outside of the context of a love relationship with God, you are in error. You are walking with some demon of religion. You cannot touch the word if it's not in the context of relationship. You cannot touch the word without the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit through the word will bring life. The letter of the law will bring death in you. More dangerous than the devil is the word without the spirit. That's why Satan will use the word. But he brings the word without the spirit. So you can, you, oh man, even the devil will quote scripture to you, man. You can come and and learn the whole Bible. And the devil will remind you of a lot of scriptures. He reminded Jesus Christ about scriptures. Are you still here? But that we're supposed to come to later. But I just leave it there. What I'm saying is, if the word says a more excellent way, do we have time? Ooh, I have a little bit of time. Do we have some scripture there? Our Father's excellence. Go with the first one. 
And this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment that you may approve the things that are the things that are excellent. excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. So all these things must happen. Love, the more excellent way, that it abounds in you more and more, but with the knowledge, but with the knowledge of through the word of God that you can discern who is speaking, that you can discern what's happening, and that you may be standing approved. And understand how to approve things. There's other scripture that says, study to show yourself approved. 2 Timothy. Study to show yourself approved as a workman that will not stand ashamed, but accurately dividing the word of God. Because the word is a two edged sword. But that man must be approved. Approved. But you will understand approving. Hello? Through the word of God alone. The proof, so that you understand what is excellent, but with a sincere heart, with no offense, until Christ come. Excellence. You need to grow in excellence. Other word is excel. You need to always excel. Excel into what? Excel into excellence. Are you with me? When you're talking about the word of God, and we talk about excellence, what is Excellent. Is somebody responding to the word that the word is alive in you? You don't know the, no, the, the facts of the word. The word is alive in you. The word is alive in you. Hello? Let the word of Christ dwell richly in you and among you. The word says. Dwell means it's alive and it's living in you. And it's living with you. Amen. Next one. You are writing down, hey, 2 Corinthians 8 verse 7. But just as you excel, everybody say excel. excel. In everything and lead the way. In faith, in speech, in knowledge, in genuine concern, and in your love for us. See that you excel, excel in this gracious work. Excel means in this gracious work, you must become excellent. You must become excellent. If somebody look at your life and say, excellent, it's because of the excellence of the word. You first decide that the word has to do with excellence. If you want to touch excellence, touch the word and let the word touch you. When you touch the word, you are touching excellence. When the word touch you, excellence is touching you. Am I making a little bit sense? Are you with me? Come on, man. So that's what the Bible school is going to be called. We are working through the process. Even when we're talking about the church camp that's coming up, by the end of the year, there will be no Kriari anymore. It will be our Father's excellence. But now what are we doing about, just for the sake of time, we will talk about the rest another time. What are we doing with the arts? Father's excellence with the word. The arts, we're going to call it our Father's initiative. You have it there. Our Father's initiative. And with our Father's initiative, there's a Genesis 1, verse 1, 2, 3. There's a John 1, verse 1, 2, 3. With Creari, where God said create, it was when God opened up the whole thing of Genesis 1. In the beginning was, no, 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 that's John 1, sorry. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Face of the deep, in a lot, lot of translations. Nothing happened, and then, then God said, let there be light. And there was light. So then God created. God created the heavens and the earth, but then, in what God created, then nothing, nothing, nothing happened until he took initiative. Are you with me? Before he created. So there's God and there is what he creates. And in the middle is initiative. Earth is waiting. Heaven is waiting. Spirit is waiting. Hovering. Until the Father takes initiative and says, then God said. And for the future in the, in the New Testament church, in the future in the church going into a lot of, a lot of things in the end times. A key thing would be, 
Who is initiating what in your heart? Because, like I said, Satan came with Scripture. So you can hear a verse. You can hear a verse. You can hear a, a, a verse from the Bible. But it was Satan. It was Satan coming to you. Are you still here? It was Satan quoting Scripture. Who is taking the initiative in your idea? Because Satan had good ideas. He had good ideas. He, he was initiating miracles from God, how the, the stones can become bread. He initiated the power of God that, that you can jump from the temple and, and, and there will be a testimony about God's greatness. Hello. You can, about God's vision that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God. I give you all the kingdoms. I respond to the scripture. And me, Satan, give you the, the promises of God. Oh, man. But you need to know who is taking the initiative. And Jesus knew the initiative with those scriptures came from hell, came from Satan. And he said, get behind me, Satan. That sensitivity in the mature church of Christ is going to happen for the end time revival, for the end time sanity of the church and protection. There will be a maturity coming from their spirit in how they are sensitive, Holy Spirit testifying in your spirit and your spirit responding for worship in spirit and truth. There will be such a sensitivity and through that key, there will be miracles upon miracles like the earth has never seen. Mark my words prophetically. I pray by God's grace you will be part of it. And I will be part of it. Amen. Amen. So please, my brother, my sister, what are we talking about? You go one to John. There's a one in John. That is the beginning of everything. Not Genesis 1 verse 1 to 3. John 1 verse 1 to 3. In the beginning, before all time was the Word, Christ. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God Himself. He was continually existing in the beginning, co eternally, co-eternally with God, the Father. All things were made and came into existence through Him, and without Him, not even one thing was made that has come into being. But before it was created, before creare, there was God. In the beginning was God. And then God took initiative, and then He created Pray with us that we will know how everything in the next few months must fall in line to the next adjustment that God is bringing. Because like I told you, in more than 80, I don't know how many percent of what we, we took, the next step of what God is saying, a lot of prophetic adjustments had to be made. That's how we saw that we are not perfect. We're not hearing just perfect. But that God will show us because we believe we're going to be part of what God is going to do in the nations. Amen. But the, but the nations must know. And where we go, they need to be taught who is taking the initiative in the next idea that they have. In the next vision, in the next dream, in the next excellent idea that they have. It's not necessarily the excellent way. Excellent idea. But it wasn't from God. Are you still here? Uh, are you still here? I'm, I think we must finish with another one. Just another one. There we go. Give me a next one. You have a next one? Next one. Then Jesus said, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He and I do nothing out of my own. I do nothing on my own. Anybody? On my own initiative. But I speak just what the Father taught, taught, taught me. Talking about I've been taught into a place of excellence. And with the place, in the place of excellence where I live, I move, I speak. And where you speak, where you live, where you serve, there will be excellence. If you understand excellence as the foundation and let you make sure that you don't take the initiative. Because when you mature, you become more dependent. When you mature, you are more open for teaching. When you mature, the more you mature, mature the more you know that you know nothing. 
When you're immature and you're a child, you know, and some teenagers, just some, I think they know it. Mom and dad doesn't know, and the others don't know. So we can have all this wara wara making noise, being a noise in the nations instead of a voice. But the voice is going to become clearer because excellence is going to come into the church. The initiative, we will know when it's God and when it's not God. When it's God and when it's not God. I pray that for you. I pray that for me. That we will become more and more like him. That you will not do anything from your own initiative. But that it will be God's initiative through you being taught. Through you being teachable. That's what I'm saying in how I see my life and how I see many things that happened in me and, and, and what God is doing in the nations. God's going to do amazing things. My brother, my sister, but he wants a people where it will be nothing about themselves and all about him. Let, let's allow God to get us into that place as he grinds us together. And unfortunately, he's going to use people in your life and they, he's going to make sure that they irritate you. He's going to make sure that they irritate you so that you are aware of some flesh in you. So that you can cut off and deal with the flesh. And then the irritation will go. Hallelujah. Okay, rather on that one, Monisu will muff like me. Um, <laughs> um, in that sense, I say, God's going to do a major thing. Let's say, it will be my father's initiative in my life based on excellence that I found in his word in Jesus' name. So help me, God. <laughs> Thank you, Father, for who you are and what you do. Oh, God, we need you. We need you. Without you, we are absolutely nothing. Just rubbish, Lord. We have one destiny, and that's hell. But God, in you, through you, we find the definition of excellence. We want to excel by your grace, through your grace, and your word, your blood, for that what was wrong, Lord but that we can come boldly through the blood to your throne of grace and say, please, Lord, we need your enablement, your grace for today, for tomorrow, for the rest of our lives. I pray that for every man, woman, to get a shocking revelation about your awesome grace and enablement that you are giving us, Lord. We thank you for that, Father. And I pray that we will understand how to come into the place of walking in excellence. Walking with the word in us and, and we in the word. God, so that we become sensitive. And even if we are trained, even through frustration many times, how to know your word, how to know your voice, Lord, so that we understand through knowing your word and knowing your voice, who is taking the initiative. That we will only move when you move. We will only say when you say. We will only do when you do, Lord. By your grace, in spite of our imperfections, Lord, please, please come and do that in your church, on earth as it is in heaven. So we pray and all say, Amen, Amen, Amen.